Good morning, everybody. My name is Ricardo Satue. I am from the company A Plus EDI. And I'm going to explain you the applications uh, for which we are using additive manufacturing today. Uh, first of all, let me explain you what we are because it's uh, important to understand how we use uh, additive manufacturing. A Plus Idiara is an automotive uh, engineering partner for all the manager manufacturers around the world. We are more than 2,000 professionals. Uh, most of them technicians and, uh, and engineers, uh, and we are based all over the world. Our headquarters are very close to Barcelona, about 70 kilometers from here. And we have uh, state-of-the-art testing facilities, uh, a large proving ground and many other countries. But we are also present in uh, different countries uh, like Germany, Italy, China, India, Brazil, United States, wherever the uh, automotive industry is. And one of the distinctions of our company is the innovation. Innovation is always at the core of all our services, and we are always looking how we can improve our services. We like to explain that we focus the development of the vehicles based on the vehicle functionalities. This is what we call the development led by functionalities. And as functionalities, we understand all these things that are finally perceived by the users. Uh, users understand a vehicle is doing well when the vehicle is uh, safe, when it's reactive to the steering wheel, when it's braking correctly, when the suspensions work well, when the noise is not uh, uh, uncomfortable, when the powertrain is reactive but at the same time is uh, having a good uh, energy efficiency, etc. And this is what we are uh, experts in. We are experts in making vehicles work well. And in all this, how we can understand, how can additive manufacturing help us? When we want to develop a vehicle, uh, we have to go get in a constant loop, uh, well, not, not constant, but several loops of development, uh, focusing on the virtual testing and physical testing. And, and there is where we can uh, really appreciate the, uh, the, the, the things that additive manufacturing can help. If we look at the complete vehicle development uh, sequence, of course, there are areas in which additive manufacturing can be also very useful. For example, when we go to styling and feasibility, when we go to packets and surfacing, when we go to the CAD of the vehicle, and there we can use additive manufacturing, as many people is doing, for concept models, for style models, for fit and form, for sitting bugs. But this is not our core business. Our core business is what happens just after this, is when we go to the development, so we want to improve the vehicle response. And there is where uh, additive manufacturing for us is very important. Of course, a company like us, when we, have, when, we are, when we are performing many tests, we need fixtures. And additive manufacturing can help us to perform the test uh, better and to use uh, the right sensors for the testing and, and so on. But really, the new element of additive manufacturing for us is the possibility of developing, of manufacturing functional prototypes. Functional prototypes, meaning that they perform well in the test they are going to perform. They, we are not looking at having a good prototype that looks very nice, that is uh, really smooth, that looks like a, per, like a part uh, made with the normal uh, production technologies. We are looking for having parts that are performing physically in the same way they are doing. They have to be representative. And of course, depending on the functionality, the, per, the, the, the characteristics of these parts must be different. For example, if we are going to develop some components for the crash testing of the vehicle, the parts have to be, uh, need to have a good performance in the crash at impact. And this is really something tough 
for the for the for the uh, for the parts made with additive manufacturing. So, how do we differentiate ourselves in this big business of additive manufacturing that is growing up, that is appearing? We understand very well what is the performance of the part, what are the characteristics we are demanding to the different components, and this is leading to a unique prototype manufacturing. So we understand the part, we understand what they have to do, and then we understand what is the correct, uh, the necessary uh, additive manufacturing process, what is the material, what are the limitations, for, of course there are limitations in additive manufacturing, but we can solve part of these limitations by uh, orientating the part and making the part work in the, uh, in the right, right direction. And as I was saying, we do not look to have a very nice part. It's something secondary for us. What is our solution? Our solution has been a own developed uh, 3D printer using FFF technology. Uh, this is not why we get there, because we could not find something that was really uh, uh, fitting our demands. We have made a 3D printer with a very large volume, two meters per one meter per one meter, or two, meter two, two cube meters, and with fast, fast movements, printing a speed up to 150 millimeters per second and 45 millimeter cube. Uh, per second of production. That's making a, 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 a prototype of 4.5 kilos in one day. That's very big. And this is something that could, we could not find in the market and well, some solutions that could approach there were very, very expensive. But you will say, this is realistic to expect uh, having a prototype made with additive manufacturing today, uh, for example, used for a impact applications? Well, let's see. The, the approach we made was, well, one of the approaches we've made is we characterized one sample of material made by uh, additive manufacturing with our printer. And in our case, we decided to perform a flexion test, a three-point flexion test, a dynamic test. So this is not something static or quasi-static. This is uh, dynamic test, so this is very demanding for, for the part. And then we look at the, the acceleration curves to understand if this is performing well. And what do we define? We find, for example, that with a sample of uh, uh, a real bumper material, uh, the red uh, graph here, we had uh, some acceleration and, and, a, and a long elongation. With typical FFF of, or FDM materials, like the green curve, we have something that is very stiff, but it also is very fragile. So it was not performing correctly. But we, find, we can find in the market, and also by uh, working well with the materials, we can uh, produce uh, samples that have the, the behavior of the black line. So a material that is much closer to the real uh, behavior of the part, that to the behavior that the part will have when uh, produced with industrial technologies. And this is what we are looking for, for materials that perform well. So this is showing us that we really have the potential to get there, to get to the point of making functional prototypes from additive manufacturing. And what can we use additive manufacturing for? Well, for example, to produce bumpers for pedestrian protection testing during very early phases of the development. Today, we take months to get to the point where we can test a bumper. Because to produce a bumper, we need to make injection uh, aluminum molds and injection uh, prototypes, etc. And this takes long time also because it's very expensive. If we can bring one of these prototypes maybe at the month number two, after the, the beginning of the project, we can introduce this data into the development loop, uh, and we can feedback the simulation, and we can reduce at the end the length of the, of the whole project. Very similar thing we can do 
with door trims. Door trims are very important for the protection in the event of a site impact, in the, in the, in the, in the event of a crash. And, and these uh, door trims are not only used in the vehicle, they are also used in the, in the picture you see uh, on your left uh, with a subsystem test. We are not uh, crashing a car, we are doing this with a, what is called a high G test. And in this case, what we need is something that is representative of the side of the car. If this, uh, we can, if this test can be done very early in the project, we can change, for example, the shape of the door trim and improve the performance uh, of the protection of the, of the vehicle. Very similar things for the uh, aerodynamics of the vehicle. Aerodynamics is important, not only because aerodynamics uh, make the car go faster. Aerodynamics is important because it's also uh, very important for energy efficiency. And today, with uh, electric vehicles, this is a point that is getting more and more important. Today, to go to a wind tunnel, we need to make a clay model that is very heavy, that has to be uh, kept under certain temperature and humidity conditions. And this is not easy to move to a wind tunnel and make the test. We can make, our idea is that we can make a, a complete vehicle model with a, a rapid prototyping, with a, a 3D printing. Uh, with one one scale models or one two scale models, and we can make this in a kind of a Lego. We can make the parts, we can make different solutions, we can exchange them very quickly, and this is uh, going to facilitate a lot the the way we can test and uh, and, the, and the results we we obtain from the from the test. Other solutions, we can make clear models, and this is for example very interesting when we go to the development of fuel systems. Fuel systems uh, sometimes have problems that are not easy to, be, to predict. Uh, many times the CFD, the computation, computational uh, fluid dynamic simulation, is not so accurate to predict uh, problems during refilling. And if we can make a test where we can see what is happening inside with a clear model, with something made uh, of transparent plastic or translucent plastic, we can uh, win a lot of time in the uh, in the development. So, to, to tell you some uh, conclusions, we are convinced additive manufacturing has a big potential for us. Uh, we can improve a lot our development uh, processes and methodologies. It is very close to be a reality. We are close to bring to make uh, prototypes that are really. Uh, representative of the final part uh, under the most difficult conditions that are impact conditions and there are also a very big there is also very big uh, array of functionalities that can be tested uh, in a much easier way with additive manufacturing uh, prototype what is our advice for the industry? Uh, where are the weak points that we identify today? Uh, materials. Materials with technical characteristics and materials that can be designed very quickly, if possible, with some kind of uh, additives. So if we ask to have a material a little bit stiffer, a little bit softer, it's possible to make it on demand and to get it in a few days and make the pot and test it because this is something that can uh, be very important for our, for our business. This is all, all for my side. Uh, thank you very much for your kind attention.